Hello, I'm Maria Vilaris. In this video, I want to talk about a recent result that was demonstrated and published where researchers have achieved quantum teleportation, not just of a quantum state, but of actual quantum operations. What I want to do is talk a bit about what quantum teleportation is, what the researchers showed with this new result and cut it into context. So this was research done by, well, it was actually the same sub department that I did my PhD in atomic and laser physics at the University of Oxford, but in a different group. I was in a theoretical quantum foundations group. This is experimental with trapped ion technology and I also know some of the authors of this work, so if you're watching, hello, tell me if I misunderstood anything in this video. Feedback is welcome. So what is this milestone? This is the blog on the Department of Physics website, which I think is a pretty nice explanation of what's going on if you want to read something. And the actual paper was published in Nature here. It's helpful first to summarize what quantum teleportation is, and this result is then a development on top of that. Quantum teleportation is a protocol where you have a pair of qubits, our fundamental quantum states. You have a pair of entangled qubits, and let's say Alice has one of them and Bob has the other, so they have they share a pair of entangled qubits. And Alice wants to transport a some other qubit that has some that encodes some quantum state. She wants to transport that qubit over to Bob, but Bob's far away, and it's difficult to physically send the qubit. So quantum teleportation provides an alternative way of getting the qubit to Bob. And what happens is that Alice does a joint measurement on the qubit she wants to send, let's call it the, the data qubit, and her entangled qubit, she measures them both. She gets two bits of classical information from that measurement. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. She sends those bits over to Bob. It's just classical bits, so she can send it over the phone or however she wants. And then based on that information of what those two bits are, Bob then applies one of four different possible operations to his qubit and after doing that Alice's original data qubit is now transported to Bob. The cool thing about quantum teleportation is that when you have shared entanglement you can then use this as a resource to send quantum information between those locations by only physically sending classical bits between them. So this is a really cool protocol and the first implementations of this protocol was part of the recent Nobel Prize for fundamental aspects of quantum physics related to Bell inequalities, but also quantum teleportation experiments. And so this is a big deal and it was very cool when quantum teleportation was first implemented experimentally and it's still, it's cool. So what is the, the difference with this? new research. Now, this new experiment is not just doing standard quantum teleportation, it's doing something different, it's doing quantum gate teleportation. Let's take a look at what this actually is. It's useful to have a look at the figures in the paper. The teleportation is done using these trapped ions. Here we have the, the trapped ions that are used for this experiment. We have two of them in one location, so that's Alice's location, and then two in the distant location, which is Bob's location. What we just spoke about, quantum teleportation, was a protocol to send a qubit of information from Alice to Bob by making use of a of shared entanglement between Alice and Bob. So that's this quantum link is the fact that you prepare these qubits that they have one each of to be entangled beforehand and sending classical information between them. So that's this classical link. But in standard 
quantum teleportation, you have one data qubit here and then it gets transported to, to Bob via this teleportation process. Now, here we're teleporting a quantum gate, a quantum operation called a control Z gate. This is a gate that acts on two qubits and this protocol is going to implement this gate on these two qubits, one that Alice has and one that Bob has. Alice and Bob start with this entangled pair of qubits where they have one each and then by doing some quantum gates individually between their entangled qubit and their data qubit, the one that we want to do operations on, they apply these quantum gates individually in their own locations. Then they have these measurements with classical information when they measure these entangled qubits, so they can exchange classical information here. And depending on the outcomes of that classical information, they apply some quantum gates to their data qubits. So Alice applies this gate to her qubit, and Bob applies this gate to his qubit, making use of this classical information exchange between them. And what that does overall is implement a quantum gate between Alice's data qubit and Bob's data qubit. So this, that's what this equivalence means here. This is the symbol for doing a control Z gate between two qubits. So what this is saying is that if you have this protocol where you have this shared entanglement, you do these operations individually on Alice's side and Bob's side, measure, exchange classical information, and do these quantum gates based on that individually in each location, then it implements the same thing as doing an actual two qubit gate implemented on Alice and Bob's qubits. So the reason this is unique and interesting is because if you want to apply a two qubit quantum gate, then you typically would need those qubits to be in the same location and you apply it to those qubits together to get them to interact using quantum control over both of those qubits. But using this method, you don't need quantum control over Alice's data qubit and Bob's data qubit together. You've replaced needing that with sharing entanglement and classical information. So that's how teleporting one gate works using the entanglement and classical link between two different locations. That is kind of the first step of what was implemented, but more generally it's building up to something more complex, which is implementing an actual algorithm across these kind of separate locations. So this is called distributed quantum computing, because the idea is that you are doing an algorithm with quantum gates. That's what quantum computing is. It's applying these operations to qubits. But instead of applying them locally, so having all your qubits there and you directly apply these quantum gates, you do it in this distributed way where you have shared entanglement between these different locations and you use that together with classical information exchange to get the algorithm implemented overall between qubits in these locations but without directly applying the operations to them. So here they demonstrated Grover's algorithm, which is a well-known quantum algorithm for a particular problem. It's called Grover's search. It's to do with finding an item in a list. And they did this kind of using these different locations with the trap tie-on qubits. So the novelty of this result is previous work has implemented versions of this gate teleportation in a probabilistic way where it doesn't work every time but it works some of the time and part of what they did here was show that they did it in a deterministic way meaning that it works every time they don't have to pick out some versions of it which worked. Of course, it is with some error rate, as with all quantum systems, but it's kind of a deterministic protocol, not a probabilistic one. And they also actually had 
these distant systems and showed that it worked across these physically separated locations rather than say on a you could kind of run the same protocol with all the qubits being on a single chip and all the maths would work out the same they just wouldn't physically be in different locations and they believe it's the first time that an algorithm has been implemented in this distributed way as mentioned here it's a cool experiment i really like the conceptual idea of quantum gate teleportation that you can kind of implement these these gates using the the entanglement and classical information being shared and then not need to actually do a quantum operation between these distant locations you can still effectively implement a gate between those distant locations so it's a really cool concept to be implementing but the aspect that's been emphasized here is paving the way to quantum supercomputers so what does this mean for quantum computing i think what they're getting at with the idea of quantum supercomputers is making a parallel with the way that in classical computing we have supercomputers implementing computation in a distributed way of having different parts of the computation running on different processes and there's a kind of analogy with this is a way of connecting up quantum processes so that you can implement an algorithm using lots of kind of separated processes as long as they have this entanglement and classical information connection and practically in terms of where this comes in on the pathway of building quantum computers and scaling them up as we scale up quantum computers you need to get more and more qubits together and at some point the most practical thing in terms of how you can control a lot of qubits might be to have a separate module with qubits and then connecting them via this entanglement and classical information the possibility of having these distinct modules and connecting them together is a option for how you can scale up quantum computing when you have a large number of qubits it might turn out that it's simpler at some scale to implement them in this distributed way rather than trying to implement operations on all of the qubits together it also leads to this idea of in the long term future imagining a quantum internet where you imagine having different quantum computers and you kind of have these sources of entanglement to make sure that they all stay entangled and then you can use them together even if you have quantum computers in different locations so that's like a quantum version of of the internet and various people are looking into the implications of having these kinds of connected quantum computers in different locations and what that might be interesting to do with so it's an active area that people are looking at distributed quantum computing and this is a cool development on how we can actually work towards this quantum internet future so i hope that gave you some insight into what this work was doing and i'll see you another time for more reactions to quantum events.